I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, Dr. Anthony J. Emmett is the renowned author of a book called Your Unique Consciousness, The Eternal Path of Life. He takes a deep dive into the dimensions of our consciousness and its profound impact on our lives, exploring the origins and destinies of consciousness. The doctor provides insights into the multifaceted nature of the human mind and the human heart. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and purchasing this wonderful book. It is called Your Unique Consciousness. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. It's a pleasure. The pleasure is all mine, sir. I was saying to you before we started, our consciousness is what makes us human, right? Yes, that is so. Tell us a little bit about what your inspiration behind this book is. I know you were or are a plastic surgeon, and uh, I'd imagine your work in that pursuit has, uh, has influenced this endeavor as well. Yes, well, um, what we hold in our mind we send to the consciousness in all the cells of our body. Mm. And if we're happy, we make them happy and they're well. Uh, we don't realize the extent to which consciousness uh, spreads, transmits. And what you are thinking affects the way your body is functioning. Mm. And I became interested in this through the process of watching people heal from illness, from surgery, and the um, whole thing joins together in ways that we don't realize at the time. But it, it is what we are, how we are, and who we are. What we are, how we are, and who we are. That's very profound. And... For you, the mind-body connection is very, very strong. If we're thinking positive thoughts, if we're in a happy, stable state of mind, our body is more likely to be healthy, stable, and respond in kind, correct? Yes, and it helps if you don't hold bitterness or mm. anger because that upsets the cells of your immune system which normally guard your health, get rid of cancers, and uh, help you to recover from illness. So by, by forgiving what has happened, you make yourself well in ways that you are not aware of at the time. But this is the way your levels of consciousness work. You... Um, benefit from sleep, which is another associated level of consciousness we use. And our subconscious helps us all the time. For example, most people are unaware that the image coming from the eye is upside down when mm. it gets to the brain. And your um, subconscious turns the image right way up. And also it, it deletes things you don't want to see. Uh, and uh, this was first described in 1500. Mm. It's quite well known. Uh, it's all quite well known, but we don't put it together, and uh, we can do much better for ourselves if we allow our better side to take control, our deeper consciousness. It, it's interesting. I mean... A doctor can have such a profound effect on a patient in many ways, obviously by dispensing medicine and by performing surgeries and procedures. But there's another way. His or her bedside manner is so important. For example, I recently saw my cardiologist and he is such an upbeat, wonderful man. When I leave his office, I feel like a million bucks. I really do. He's like, get out of here. I don't want to see you for a year. Your case is boring. You're healthy. Go on. 
and you walk out of there and you feel great. But it's like you said, it's his mind body connection. He's told me I'm good. He's told me I'm healthy. Uh, he's passed along his jubilant spirit. And, you know, my heart is doing better because of that, I think, anyway. Yes, that, that's true. Because uh, when you have confidence, you instill that confidence into the cells of your body, mm. and they are better for it. Um, every cell in your body is alive and conscious, and it connects with what you have in your mind. Uh, but we forget that we've got these different levels of mind, that uh, what we're using now is our everyday conscious, but that connects and relies on your subconscious, which does a lot of things for you. For example, um, you teach yourself movements. If you play golf or tennis or gymnastics, um, you train these into your mind and they're recorded in your subconscious so that um, when you come to do that, you don't have to consciously do it. You just do it through your unconscious mind. Um, we are like an iceberg. 15% of our enormous brain is working on our everyday conscious, but the other 85% works on the other levels of consciousness. Um, so we connect to higher dimensions of spirit without knowing it and we're part of that and we're all joined we don't know it but we're all joined through um i suppose this is part of what telepathy is which mostly we're unaware of mm. things come to us you know sometimes you think of aunt maud i'd better give her a telephone call and you find she was thinking of you mm. But in your everyday conscious, you're unaware of all those deeper things happening. So um, you can help yourself, improve yourself, and make yourself more well by forgiving that which you don't like and being happy and joyful. And this will make you well. Mm. I agree 100%. Um, I don't think it's recognized enough in medicine, this special mind-body connection of being optimistic, being positive, being happy, having an overall great effect on your life. Let me ask you this, doctor. Some of us are blessed with parents who are positive and cheerleaders, and we go on in life and we feel great and we're happy. Others of us have parents who might be writing darker scripts in our brain, might be viewing the world as a dangerous place, might be conjuring up imagined illnesses. How do you rewrite the programming of childhood to be more positive? Uh, that's able to be done. But let me first of all say, um, with with a baby, in the first two years, he learns love. That's programmed into his brain and filed in his subconscious. And for the rest of his life, the way he handles love, the way he gives love, the way he does things with love is influenced by that first two years recorded in the subconscious. And there's another thing. If you teach a child beliefs or patterns of behavior, uh, this is recorded. And the first seven years are very crucial because they will be taken as the gold standard of, of belief and behavior for the rest of that person's life. And it is difficult to change, but you need to know that you can change it by persisting with it and um, believing that you can. Believing that you can do a thing is is a, a big part of it. But remember, what you do to a child in the first seven years will stay there as an influence in the subconscious for the rest of that life, and particularly with love. Teach them 
to love in the first two years and they will love for the rest of their life. It's very powerful medicine. Very powerful medicine indeed. Let me talk to you about your work as a plastic surgeon. When you changed people's appearances, did you change or reset their happiness level? Uh, did it change their perspectives? Did it change their overall health in more than just a cosmetic way in many cases? Oh, yes. And um, I frequently was working on children who um, needed to conform in their appearance to what society expected. And by doing that, you created a bright, happy outlook in that child. And that um, what we what we have programmed into us as children, um, both by our appearance and our thoughts, um, stays with us. Um, there is um, what you, what you teach a child will stay there. Teach them love and happiness, and they will follow that. You can change the world by teaching children to have a good um, self-image. People follow their self-image through their life, and you create that self-image for them when they're a child. It's worth remembering. We're their first mirrors. They view themselves by how we view them, right? Yes. Well, <clears throat> I um, when I was discussing... Uh, I used a reversing mirror to show people the way they really are. Um, and that way I could remove the subconscious conditioning that they had about their appearance. And I would show them the way they really were by removing that conditioning. Um, yeah, that's pretty fascinating. The non-reversing mirror shows more of our true self is that what it is yes well we we look in the mirror and we see ourselves in reverse right um i had a reversing mirror which was two front silvered mirrors and that would turn it back to looking at yourself as you really were most people learn the reverse in the mm. mirror or or even looking at the surface of the pond, <laughs> yeah. at your reflection. Exactly. But um, to un see yourself as you really are and to remove some of the conditioning that you have about your appearance. Um, and a, a lot of this, this is held in the subconscious. But the higher conscious is the level at which we connect with uh, all that is, the energy that holds the universe in being and we have that connection within and many people have written about this it's it's quite well known but it's a bit hard to believe if you don't um, delve into it yeah i also think what further makes your point about the impact of our brain on our body is not just the positive impact it can have, but look at what happens when a long married couple, one of them dies, often within days, hours, the other partner who is completely healthy dies. Um, heartbreak can cause death as well and pain and disease, right? Yes, because that affects every cell in your body. Mm -hmm. You put that unhappiness into your brain and it, it radiates with your consciousness to all the cells particularly the immune cells, which govern much of the health. And by um, transmitting, you transmit your conscious attitude to all the parts of your body, to the organs and the cells. And the immune system, which normally gets rid of uh, problems with like early cancers, you keep your immune system cells happy and they work for you with happiness. Uh, when you become profoundly sad, unhappy, that is reflected to the cells of your body in ways that you don't quite realize. But if you can be determinedly happy and forgiving, 
um, it's a big thing. Absolutely. People who take SSRIs and other drugs to combat anxiety, depression, sadness, and so forth, does this have the same effect? Are they resetting that mind-body connection by taking these serotonin reuptake inhibitors um, in the same way as having positive thoughts? Um, every, every time you sedate yourself, of course, you sedate your mind, which passes that information onto the other cells of your body in ways that we're frequently unaware of at the time. So... Um, Better if you can cultivate happiness and joy. And people have cured themselves of quite severe illness by processes of laughter and happiness over a period of time transmits this to the body, which recovers. Wonderful. If you were to write a prescription right now for our <laughs> viewers, <laughs> a, a non-medical <laughs> prescription, what... <laughs> piece of advice would you put on that piece of paper in triplicate for folks to follow? Think well, think happy, and think forgiveness. If we could forgive one another for all the things that happen around the world, we could get rid of conflict. So by forgiveness, you get rid of conflict in your body. And that way you are ha happier, healthier, and generally better company. <laughs> well, you seem like you're a very happy, well-grounded person. W what's your secret? I mean, I, I consider myself a very happy person. I wake up in the morning, I'm happy. My wife even makes fun of me that I wake up, bounce out of the room like Tigger and uh, have usually have a great day. Um, what's your secret to happiness? Uh, it's it's multiple. I'm I follow a vegetable diet because uh, I don't like to think of all the animals around the world being uh, ill-treated. And I, I follow a belief that you should always think the best of other people. And that way you will think the best of yourself. And that, in ways that you don't understand, will affect your everyday health, happiness, welfare, and um, we are more clever than we think we are, mm -hmm. and often we can see things beyond what we recognize in our conscious life. But instead of resentment, anger, hatred, and war, we should project forgiveness, love, and happiness. Wonderful advice. Dr. Anthony J. Emmett is the doctor that we all need. Talk about a wonderful bedside manner. He's got it. <laughs> and he's got a he's got a <laughs> prescription for you as well. It's in his book. It's called <laughs> Your Unique Consciousness, The Eternal Path of Life. This book literally can be a life changer for you. Because if you change what you think, you'll change the way your body reacts. We've scratched upon the surface here. If you wanna learn more about it, pick up the book. It is highly recommended. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for a very nice interview. Well, and I appreciate I... it, Doctor. I found it fascinating <laughs> talking with you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.